What if I told you that there was something in your house slowly deteriorating your health? Mold can turn into a big problem if you don't do something about it, and knowing exactly what you're facing is the first step. So in this video, I'm going to share five things about mold that you really need to know. But before I get to the five important things, let me explain why you should care about this in the first place. To begin with, mold is all around you and is present in every environment you step into during your day. As much as it is a vital part of a natural environment, it is a problem when it starts growing in your home and within its structures. It's important to know what attracts mold so that you can take the necessary steps to prevent it. It's also helpful to be aware of the symptoms of mold toxicity because they are more common than most people realize. Not caring about mold leaves you and your home vulnerable to its effects. Prevention is key, but if mold does develop, you need to know what to do. Okay, so let's start with diving deeper into how mold affects your health. Again, no one is immune to mold, whether you're aware of it or not. Some people are sensitive to it and will develop symptoms sooner after exposure, while others may not develop symptoms until months later. Although not all molds are dangerous, a person's health can be affected depending on the type of mold they were exposed to, the amount, and their personal sensitivity. Certain types of mold produce mycotoxins, which are damaging to our mitochondria, and can lead to a variety of health problems. Because mold can grow anywhere, mold toxicity is a bigger problem than many people realize and is therefore overlooked. What most people don't know is that toxic mold can be present without visible growth. So the absence of visible mold does not necessarily mean that there is no toxic mold spores or mycotoxins present. The symptoms are also broad and manifest differently in different people. So without proper functional testing, they're often misdiagnosed diagnosed and treated incorrectly. The people most susceptible to mold are ones with a history of asthma, lung issues, or weakened immune systems. Babies, children, and the elderly are also more at risk. However, anyone exposed to large quantities of mold, whether sensitive or not, will become ill. Then there is some people who are allergic to mold and can have an allergic reaction by inhaling even a small amount of mold spores. These symptoms can range from mild to severe, with some people experiencing a runny nose, watery eyes, coughing, bloating, a rash, and sneezing, while others can experience breathing problems that can lead to an asthma attack. These symptoms can develop quickly or be delayed, and long-term exposure will further worsen them. The worst thing about mold is how hidden it is. It's usually a slow threat that you don't notice. It just builds quietly in the background until you suddenly feel like your health is falling apart for no good reason. If you suspect that you may have mold toxicity, I recommend doing everything you can to avoid further mold exposure, even if that means packing up all your belongings and moving homes like I did. Secondly, I highly recommend consulting a functional medical professional experienced with mold. They focus on treating the root cause, not just the symptoms. Through comprehensive analysis and extensive blood tests, these experts develop personalized treatment plans, ensuring a thorough and staged approach to full recovery. It's clear that mold is a serious and a sneaky threat to our health. And if you suspect that it's affecting your health, but don't see any visible signs of it, you're now probably wondering where should you even start looking for it. So next, I'll dive into where mold might be hiding and how you might be exposed. Mold is all around us. In fact, mold spores are present in almost all environments. They float around in the air, undetectable to the human eye. Mold thrives outdoors, but enters your home through open windows and doors through air vents and by attaching to your clothes or your pet's fur. When mold finds surfaces with favorable conditions, such as wet or damp areas, they stick to them and start growing. All that mold needs to reproduce is considerable moisture, oxygen, and a food source. And since mold feeds on organic matter like wood, cardboard, fabrics, or food, it can thrive in most environments. So here are a few reasons why mold might be growing in your home and where it might be hiding. Reason number one, high humidity. If you live in a humid environment or near a large body of water, there is a higher risk of mold developing. To prevent this, you need to control the humidity levels in your home, the optimal being between 30 and 50%. Levels higher than this could lead to mold growth. 
It's also essential to ensure your house can breathe properly. Sealing it with synthetic building materials can trap moisture and lead to mold buildup. Proper ventilation and using breathable materials are key to maintaining a healthy indoor environment and preventing moisture accumulation. Reason number two, leaks and excess moisture. If water damage has occurred and it hasn't been cleaned and dried within 48 hours, you are at risk of mold infestation. That's why it's so important to be proactive after flooding and not wait for a more convenient time to deal with the affected areas. Any leaks in your roof, as well as burst pipes, need to be fixed quickly. Leaks and flooding can cause mold growth to develop in all the places in your home that makes it very hard to deal with. Additionally, rising damp can be a significant issue. Moisture from the ground can seep into your walls and floors if your home lacks proper hydration insulation. Ensuring your home is well protected against rising damp is crucial in preventing mold growth. Reason number three, lack of ventilation. Laundry rooms, kitchens, and bathrooms are the most common areas affected by mold because they are often poorly ventilated. When you shower, for example, the bathroom fills up with steam. And if there is no exhaust fan or an open window, the bathroom will stay wet for hours. And the steam can even seep into other rooms in your home. So to lower humidity and moisture in your bathroom, make sure to use an exhaust fan or open some windows. Proper ventilation is crucial throughout the house. And this ties back to what I just mentioned about the need for a house to breathe. Without adequate ventilation, moisture gets trapped, leading to mold growth. In bathrooms, builders often use moisture proof or mold proof paint which might sound great, but it can actually worsen the problem by trapping the moisture and preventing it from escaping. I remember in our second home in Portugal, before it got moldy, we had a friend over who was a building specialist. As he walked around the house, he pointed out various issues and cringed at some of the construction choices. One thing he highlighted was the main bathroom, which lacked ventilation. He noted that while the paint sealed in the humidity, there was no actual ventilation, so the moisture had nowhere to escape, only a teeny tiny window. The same principles apply when cooking in your kitchen or doing laundry. Make sure to clean the dispenser trays, gaskets and seals of your appliances and leave the doors open to dry the machines after use. Any moisture problems in your home are also a sign that you may have mold developing, even if you can't see it yet. But what happens if you already have mold? This brings us to the third big thing that you need to know, how to get rid of it. There are a few products on the market that claim to effectively remove mold. However, I prefer sticking to natural mold removers because products with long lists of ingredients, I don't even know how to pronounce, are generally not created with the health of people, pets and your environment in mind. So natural mold cleaners are safe to use, but working with mold isn't. As soon as you start disturbing mold, it releases spores into the air and you want to avoid coming into contact or inhaling these spores. And that means you should always wear protective gear, rubber gloves, a breathing mask and even protective glasses. Vinegar, baking soda, hydrogen peroxide and tea tree oil are some of the most effective natural mold removers as they're able to kill most types of mold. They can be used on their own or combined for tougher mold patches. Although bleach might come to mind when you think of removing mold, I highly recommend using vinegar instead. It's safer and more effective because it can actually penetrate porous materials and kill mold at its source and prevent regrowth. Vinegar is effective for killing 80% of mold species. Bleach is not an ideal choice for mold removal. While it might seem effective on non-porous surfaces, it fails to address mold on porous surfaces, like for example, a drywall. Since it can't properly penetrate porous materials, this allows the mold to grow back in the same place. Additionally, mold exposed to bleach can actually adapt to it and use it as a food source, causing it to multiply and become more resilient. Furthermore, commercial bleach emits harmful fumes and can be hazardous to your health, making it a less safe option. If you want to learn how to clean mold effectively, make sure to check out this video where we deep dive into the process. However, this is mainly for small bits of mold that you can deal with yourself. 
larger areas of mold are going to be way more difficult. So that brings us to the fourth thing you need to know about mold, remediation. According to the EPA, any mold problem larger than 10 square feet should be dealt with by a professional who has experience dealing with mold. It's also a good idea to seek professional help if there is mold in your HVAC system, if the mold in your home was caused by rising damp or flooding, or if the mold exposure is severe and widespread. However, choosing the wrong remediation company can actually make things worse. The main issue with most companies is that they use some really harsh chemicals to kill the mold, which can contaminate your home and continue releasing harmful substances into the air for a long time. Additionally, many companies only remove the visible surface mold without addressing the root cause, allowing the mold to keep festering in the background. When choosing a mold remediation company, it's crucial to look for one that's health conscious and focuses on long-term solutions. They should address the root cause of the mold, eliminate it thoroughly, and take steps to prevent future outbreaks. Additionally, ask about the products they use and opt for companies that use one safe for your health. Now, let's move on to something else you've probably already heard before. Do not eat the clean part of moldy bread. It's pretty common for bread or cheese or any other food to get moldy after being left for too long. Did anyone ever tell you just cut those parts off? I used to, or maybe you are even doing this regularly. So here is another huge issue that people don't realize about mold. Mold toxicity can occur through inhaling mold spores, which is the most common cause, but it can also occur through skin contact and ingestion. Yes, it's important to avoid wasting food, I agree, but if it has visible mold on it, it's not safe to eat, just throw it away. The thing is that if you can see mold on your food, it means that the whole thing is already contaminated and there is no saving the clean parts. Even worse, if you have a pack of strawberries where one is moldy, all of them are contaminated. And if you're wondering why you've been fine even though you've been doing this for years, well, it's because not all molds are harmful. But the problem is that you can't tell which molds are safe and which are harmful just by looking at them. So by eating contaminated food, you're basically gambling with your health. So out of everything we've looked at in this video, the health effects of mold is definitely the scariest topic. I briefly mentioned how I suffered from mold toxicity, but you can hear more about that in this video where we go deeper into what mold can do to your health. So click here to go watch that one. 